you are watching Adjuster TV. Good evening, everyone. This is Max Olson with your Adjuster TV special weather report. Two tropical depressions have formed, and both of which will be making their way towards the U.S. mainland. Potential impacts and timeline for both of those systems. But first, a look back at last week's derecho. What exactly is a derecho? How is it qualified? And what were the impacts of this specific one? Now, for a thunderstorm complex to be classified as a derecho, it must have a few key factors. One of which is longevity. It must last for at least six hours and maintain a wind speed of 60 miles per hour throughout the entirety of the complex. This, however, does not mean the entire complex has the exact same wind speeds. As we saw in this particular system, System, some pockets had winds up to 120 and perhaps even 140 miles per hour. That's the same wind speed that you would find in a category four hurricane. This particular one started in the early morning hours in southeastern South Dakota. It progressed its way into Iowa and eventually Illinois, both of those states receiving the most amount of damage. Early estimates say billions of dollars of damage occurred to crops and structures within the area. Ultimately, the damage is still being calculated, but what we do know for sure is that deployments are happening because of this. I know of multiple people who are out in Iowa currently around the Cedar Rapids area where the strongest wind speeds were observed, some of which are doing vehicle inspections from vehicles that were completely sandblasted. Others are looking at crops and some are looking at farm structures, outbuildings, houses that received roof damage. There's a lot to cover in this entire segment that went through Iowa into Illinois. It's a pretty big surface area covered and it's going to take a long time for the people in this area to recover. This was a pretty unprecedented derecho because of the wind speeds. As we said earlier, some estimates say that wind speeds got up to 140 miles per hour, which is pretty much as high end as you can get with a derecho. Usually to get those type of wind speeds, you have to have some type of very intense low pressure, meaning a tornado or hurricane. It's very uncommon for derechos to have that type of wind speed. So this will definitely go in the record books as one of the most intense in recorded history. Now onto the tropics. We have two depressions, 13 and 14, both of which are struggling at the moment, but are prog to become hurricanes upon landfall. Now, there's a few things that we need to keep an eye on, one of which is the fact that they aren't completely developed yet. That means they don't have a super established center of rotation, and that means there's going to be variability in track. When we don't have an established center, it's hard for the computer models to tell exactly where these things are going to go. We have a pretty good idea, and models have been relatively consistent with these two systems so far, but don't be surprised to see some track shifts in the future, and that can mean a lot when we have floor Florida in the line of fire for Tropical Depression 13. Uh, we have the Yucatan Peninsula for Tropical Depression 14, uh, and then eventually the Gulf Coasts for both. It looks like uh, Tropical Depression 14 is going to bypass the Yucatan, go up through the Gulf, and potentially make a landfall somewhere in Texas or Louisiana sometime early next week, probably Tuesday or Wednesday. Now, this could obviously change some, but that has been the general consensus thus far. Tropical Depression 13, however, is proud to make a potential Florida landfall sometime towards the end of this weekend, and then go on into the Gulf of Mexico, potentially making a secondary landfall along the Gulf Coast states. Now, there's a lot of uncertainty, as we said. There could be track shifts to the south or north, and that would greatly impact the impacts, right? If this thing doesn't make landfall over Florida, it's going to have more time in the ocean. But if it goes too far south, you're going to be going over the islands, places like Puerto Rico, places like Cuba might be impacted, and that will change the storm structure. So there's a lot of uncertainty right now. That's why we're not going to get too specific with either of these. The main thing to take note of is to be on alert. Be continuously watching the National Hurricane Center for updates. Be sure to get any additional training. If you're an adjuster right now and you're on the fence, now is the time to get training. Not only do we have these two systems, we still have waves coming off of Africa. It's been an incredibly active season so far. If you're not training right now, then you are potentially missing out on deployments. 
there are going to be deployments if these systems continue to progress the way they are. Potentially both making landfall at the same time, that's going to impact a very, very large surface area of the United States. There's going to be flooding, there's potentially going to be wind damage. This is the time to get that last minute training in. Now we're going to continue to monitor these two systems as they make their way towards the US mainland. Be sure to stay tuned here as we're going to do additional update videos such as this one as we get more information on these systems. Also might do a few live updates on the Facebook page. So go over to the Adjuster TV Facebook group if you want to have an interactive discussion about any of these storms, potential deployments, the derate show, anything like that. You're more than welcome to discuss either on the live updates if we do one or down in the comments. If you need some additional training before deployments start coming in for these storms, head on over to adjustertv.com slash get started for some of the best training in the industry. Also head on over to iapath.com if you're interested in auto training. Now, thank you all so much for watching this Adjuster TV special weather update. If you live along the Gulf Coast states or Florida Peninsula, now is the time to prepare for a potential landfalling hurricane. These two systems are going to be in close proximity to one another, and that's going to have an effect on strength and location of landfall. But what we do know is that there are likely to be major impacts, especially with heavy rain and flooding, and then potential wind and storm surge along the coast. Once again, thank you all for watching. Stay safe and have a great rest of your week.